Good day, everyone. Welcome again to the Wings Radio program, where we hope you will be uplifted and encouraged by what you hear. We want to inspire you through Christ to fly in the power of God's Word to the challenging times in your lives. Be sure to visit the blog page for prophetic words, updates, and godly inspiration at www.wingsofprophecy.com. Now here is your host, Glenda Linkus. This is a special midweek episode of Wings Radio. Hello, believers. Welcome to the Wings Radio Show. I'm your host, Glenda Linkus, and today we are going to talk about the blood. Y'all know I like to study the uh, first mention of things in the Bible, and uh, I've been in Genesis studying lately, and I was reading in Genesis 4 about Cain and Abel, the first mention of blood in the Bible. The first mention of something in the Bible always tells you something special about it. And the first mention of blood is Genesis 4.10. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. That was God asking um, Cain what he did to Abel. And what that tells us is that blood can cry out. Blood has a voice. Blood has life. And that means that all the Native Americans who were slaughtered so America could steal their land, which is estimated to be between 2 and 18 million in North America alone, their blood is constantly crying out to God. That means that all the slaves we work to death or beat to death And we don't know how many those were because there weren't very good records kept since they were considered chattel. What we do know is approximately 12 million were brought over here. 10 to 20 percent of them didn't even live through the journey because it was so harsh. And after they got over here, the women, of course, began giving birth and they had an average of nine or ten kids apiece. So we easily worked to death or beat to death. Millions, we don't know how many millions of enslaved persons. Then add to that the over 50 million babies, little babies who have been ripped from their mother's wombs, and their blood is crying out to God constantly. Their blood is crying out, Abba, Father, we never got to fulfill our destinies. And I'm not in any way excusing the women who consented to have the abortions, but it was the nation who legalized it. God will hold both accountable if they do not repent. America is a nation that was built on the name and the ways of God. We accepted his blessings, and they were many. We even became prideful about his blessings because his blessings set us apart from every other nation on earth, except Israel, of course. And then... When we were full and had built goodly houses, and when all we had was multiplied, then our hearts were lifted up and we forgot the God who blessed us. We didn't need him anymore, so we started kicking him out of the way. In the early 60s, we kicked him out of our schools. In the 70s, we began kicking him out of our families, and the divorce rate skyrocketed. In 1973, we kicked him out of procreation when we legalized abortion. And in 2015, to our shame, we kicked him out of marriage. And our Supreme Court justices decided they would be God and redefine marriage. You know, it's a very dangerous thing to think that you know better than God. But having babies that God created in the womb and... Marriage, the way he defined it, just wasn't convenient anymore, was it? So with stiff necks and defiant faces, we showed him he was no longer welcome in our lives in America. He wasn't socially correct anymore, you know. And we refused to repent. America, once founded on God, 
is now founded on convenience and tolerance, on sin and self-indulgence. By the way, sin and self-indulgence are the foundations of Satanism for anyone who didn't know that. Did America have a destiny in God? You bet she did. But she don't have it anymore. There was a time when I believe enough repentance, repentance not only by the people, but repentance by the leaders of this nation, could have turned this nation's destiny around, could have saved it. But the Lord has told me and many others that the judgment on America is set now. He, I think he told me that two or three years ago. The only question now is how much mercy he can show to the loss between now and the end. And that depends on the prayers of his people. America, you are under God's mighty hand of judgment. Your pride cannot save you. Your wealth cannot save you. Other nations and allies cannot save you. God is not mocked. You have sown and now you will reap. War, famine, disease, and invasion, and possibly enslavement. Church, we cannot save America. It is far too late to help her. She has refused to repent. Her leaders continue to sin more and more. She has turned her back on Israel. In God's eyes, that's probably the worst of all sins. She has cast aside the Constitution that was written to honor God. It is no longer a question of if. America will be destroyed. It is only a question of when it will be finished. Befriending Israel is no longer convenient for us. Honoring America's foundations and respecting American citizens' rights through the Constitution is no longer convenient. You hear me, you Washington politicians and Supreme Court justices. You are no longer convenient for God. Judgment is coming from His hand and it is coming for you. It is coming for every person who refuses to repent and honor Him. It is coming for every pastor, every person, every politician who agrees with and supports abortion and gay marriage in defiance of His holy word. His judgment is coming to avenge the blood of the Native Americans you slaughtered, the slaves you worked to death and beat to death, and the blood of those poor little innocent babies you allowed to be ripped from their mother's wombs, not even caring that they can feel the pain, that they can feel the hands that slaughter them. You have become a filthy abomination in His sight. You wallow in your sin and you spread it to others, and there is nowhere for you to hide from his mighty hand. If you run, it will chase you. This time it will be you who cries out for mercy, but he will laugh at your calamity. For you have rejected the only begotten Son of God. You preferred your evil deeds and you preferred the darkness. But in that day, every knee shall bow, including yours, Washington, D.C. God is never mocked. Whatsoever we sow, we will also reap. And leaders, he will hold you the most accountable of all. And shame on you if you're standing with sin to be socially acceptable. Shame on you. You better repent now and you better get right with him. He did not create us so we could be tolerant. He did not create us so we could just embrace all the sin around us. He created us to be light in a dark place. He created us to be the salt of the earth. He created us to stand apart and be set apart. I don't know who I'm talking to in this message, but somebody needs to repent and get right with God. When the day for that judgment to fall that includes you comes, it will be too late. You better repent now. The judgment could fall tonight. It could fall tomorrow. Are you right with God? Are you absolutely sure you are right with Him and you do not need to repent of anything? You better be sure. I want to share with you a prophetic message the Lord gave me right after I recorded this message. Uh, 
on September 6, 2015. It's the wee hours of the morning, 2.30 in the morning, just after I recorded that. And it's called Your Time Has Come. A dark and terrible destiny awaits America. Once the land of the free, now the land of anything goes. America, once a joy to me, you have become a filthy stain of sin on the world I created. I have watched for years as your cup of iniquity filled up. I can delay judgment no longer. You pridefully refuse to turn from your wicked ways. Like a shameless harlot, you flaunt your sins around the earth. You are no longer my own. I cast you out. Your time has come. Y'all, this is a very, very serious word from the Lord. And I urge you to get right with him as quickly as possible. Because nobody knows where this is going to strike first. It's going to eventually strike the whole nation, I'm sure. But nobody knows where it's going to strike first. We know it's going to be bad. When God says something like that, he ain't playing, y'all. He's not playing. And that message that I just preached rose up in my spirit and rose up and rose up and rose up until finally I turned on the laptop and said, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and record this because it would just wouldn't leave me alone where I could go to sleep. That means somebody need to hear it. Whatever is going on with you, be sure that you are putting God first. Be sure there is no sin in your life. Be sure that you are witnessing to as many people as you can, of the lost people in your family, whatever, that you are working Jesus into the conversation. I know some of them don't take it well. Just be gentle. You know, don't overdo it because in some cases... They're just not going to receive the witness from us. I have um, one sibling that's like that, and I am sure that he is not going to receive the witness from me. I have tried and tried and tried. And finally, I just started praying, Lord, send somebody that he will listen to because he's not going to listen to me. But be in a lot of prayer. Stay in constant communication with God so he can warn you if anything's coming your way right away. Okay? Thanks for listening. God bless you. Y'all have a great weekend and a great week. Thank you so much for tuning in to hear Glenda Linkus on Wings Radio. We hope that you've been encouraged and inspired in your daily walk with Christ. You can find more of Glinda's talks on her YouTube channel, Texas Author and the Number One. You can contact Glinda by email at wingsofprophecy at gmail.com or by mail at Glenda Linkus, P.O. Box 127, Princeton, Texas, 75407. Wings Radio is a non-denominational program and is not affiliated with any other church or nonprofit organization. Followers of Jesus sense something big is about to happen. How we all would like a tangible sign happening now which directly connects the timing to his return. 
there is revealed in a 2,500 year old prophecy to America and explained in my new book, America Isaiah is Warning, God's Judgment is Coming, is that connection. Available where books are ordered and at americasjudgment.com. America Isaiah is Warning. 